So, headlines of most papers this morning. In my new job, I put out papers, so I get to see the headlines every day. And um, Boris Johnson has said that there could be up to 10,000 people, not 450, 10,000 infected with the coronavirus because it takes about a week or so for symptoms to come out. And he said that thousands of families may lose loved ones to this. It's almost as if he hasn't got a fucking clue what he's doing, isn't it? At this point, he's like Lord Farquaad in Shrek. You know, some of you may die, but that is a sacrifice I will have to make. This, this man has no idea. He has no clue what he's doing. He has no idea how to contain and deal with an international pandemic of this proportion. This is probably the biggest international pandemic we've had since SARS, since Spanish flu, since fuck knows what. And he has no idea. And the latest government advice is if you've got a bit of a cough and a cold, you should have a week off work. Well, unfortunately, Boris, unfortunately, everybody in government, unfortunately, government advisors who come up with this revelation, this brand new genius idea, we're not all on £80,000 a year like MPs are. Some of us are on less than £20,000 a year. In fact, fact, many of us are on less than £20,000 a year. So we can't afford, really, to every time we have a tickle in our throat, take a week off work. MPs, politicians, cabinet ministers, they're not in the real world. They're not living in the real world. Boris Johnson in particular. The man, like many of his MP pals, many of his parliamentary colleagues, was taught in Eton, where they are taught, you are the best of the best. You are the next generation of world leaders, of leaders of the country. You're the next generation of politicians. They're taught that from the from the get-go. That they are the best of society. They are the creme de la creme, the cream of the crop. And then he went straight into a job in uh, for the Spectator, I think, anyway. Was, correct me on that if I'm wrong. But I believe he left Eton and went straight to work for the Spectator, where he was sacked for lying. And then he went into politics and became Mayor of London and now Prime Minister and Foreign Minister in between. The man has never lived in the real world. He's never had a job like you or me have. He's never stacked shelves or swept roads or anything like that. He's never had to pay taxes that actually seriously cripple his his pocket, actually damage his paycheck substantially. I highly doubt Boris Johnson has ever looked at a payslip and thought, oh, look how much tax is on now. I'm going to have to cut ends this month. I'm going to have to cut back this month. MPs and politicians, Boris Johnson is on way more than £80,000 a year as Prime Minister. But the standard going rate for an average MP, my local MP, eighty grand a year. Do they earn eighty grand a year? Now, I'm not saying that it's easy running a country. It's not. I, did, I couldn't do it. But eighty grand a year? When people, some people are earning 17 grand a year. Some people are earning 25 grand, 35 grand, even 40 grand a year. Compared to what the MPs are getting, 40 grand a year is peanuts. Do they earn that money? Now, obviously, being an MP representing thousands of people in a constituency is a demanding job. It does, you know, it does require some kind of substantial reward beyond just representing your community, I dare say. I'm not naive enough to say that MPs should be on minimum wage and that they should just do it for the community. But their pay should be drastically cut because then we wouldn't see these stupid little recommendations such as, oh, if you have a cough, go sick for a week. Have you ever been sick for a week, Boris, on a job that pays minimum wage? Because I have. Do you know what it's like to get not only minimum wage, but then go sick for a week so your a week's pay is reducted for sick pay because statutory sick pay is nothing nothing and if Boris had ever had actually had a job a a hard job back-breaking job that pays minimum wage or thereabouts or even the living wage even even a job that pays £10 an hour I dare say if you have to go sick for a week you will suffer that week because of it because statutory sick pay is nothing nothing at all So wake up, spot a coffee, Boris, because millions of people in your country, you're meant to be Prime Minister, they can't afford to go sick. They can't afford to be off for a week with a cough. This is why people go to work sick. I have gone to work 
with a cold. I've gone to work with exhaustion before, and trust me, it's not nice. It is not nice. So that's all I really wanted to say. Wake up, Morris, smell the coffee. You can't advise, advise the, the nation that if you have a cough to go sick because that's not realistic. People have bills to pay. They have kids to provide for, unlike you, because you make babies and run, apparently. They have mortgages to pay. They have bank loans to pay off. They have food to stock in the cupboards. They have houses to maintain and lives to lead. And to do that, they need to go to work because your government over the last 10 years has cut back everything. Everything. Workers' rights have been stripped back. We have seen the lowest, the, 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 the biggest drop in working conditions since the Victorian era. Your party has done that over the last 10 years and now you're trying to rebrand yourself as the, the new Labour, like I said yesterday. The only way you can do that is to reverse some of these cuts. So if you want to be seen as the nice guy party, the nice new Tory party that's more like Labour, reverse some of these cuts. Introduce the living wage, £10 something, I think it is, across the board, across the whole country. If you want to rip off Labour's manifesto, do it properly. That's my challenge today to Boris Johnson. To uh, obviously, obviously, I dare say he will never ever see this video, but that's my challenge to him. If you want to be seen as the new Labour Party, reverse those cuts. You can start by doing that, and then you can come out and publicly apologise for the 140,000 people that died because of your party's austerity measures. And I dare say you can pay their families some compensations as well. That's what it would take for the Tory party to gain my vote in the next election. Publicly apologise. Publicly apologise for the deaths of 140,000 people in the last 10 years because of austerity. Publicly apologise for Boris Johnson's previous racist comments and sexist comments. And to publicly apologise for choosing to cut from the poorest and the most vulnerable when they could just as easily have made people like Jeffrey Bezos and other corporate big wigs, people like Philip Green, Jeff Bezos, people like, uh, what's his name, who owns Sports Direct, Mike Ashley, could have made them pay more tax. But somehow the idea that billionaires should be slightly less rich is absurd compared to, well, we could just cut it from the poor people. So the Tories, if they want to be seen as the party that's in touch, can do what I just said, publicly apologise for the deaths of thousands during austerity, publicly apologise for Boris Johnson's previous racist and sexist remarks, reverse all the cuts that they've made over the last 10 years, and become the new Labour Party. That's what, that's what it would take. But <laughs> pigs will fly in hell before that ever happens. So thanks for watching. That's really all I wanted to say. I'll see you in the next video.